This art will feature an aquilina willocenia, uh, a beautiful coloured leaf plant and the leaves actually are twisted and turned. There's that many different facets to them. Uh, I've set up an artwork here to actually draw. Um, I can use other colours on these if I want to because they're beautifully coloured. So I've actually set it up on my page, on another page, so that I can draw it from that. Um, it's not easy to draw from the actual uh, photograph either. So what I've done is set it up, taking care of the negative space. So that one goes off the page there, comes around here, goes off the page there. So you've got a large, medium and small negative space. So that's how I've planned the artwork and I'll start to work by um, measuring how far this goes into the corner of the page with my pencil. Move some things out of the way and so that starts about there. Um, so I'll then find out how long it is. It has a bit of a turn on it. It's almost as long as the pencil. Um, and the angle, that's not the right angle of it, but I'll just put it there so that I know that it does turn around and comes around and up to that point. You know that does that. So the stem will come that far down the page, probably about there. So that's where the stem will end up. And so I'll mark that there. And so that'll make sense that when I actually get this organized, and get the stem coming through from the other plant that this one will join onto that stem. I'll put it onto the stem. So I've got it very, very light to start with because I'm on smooth paper. So I'm not going to um, basically do a huge drawing to start with and then find out that I'm in the wrong places or that it's not exactly as it should be. So that would come across to about there from that where that turns just to sort of get an idea I'll put it on the paper on the uh, tape so I don't mark that and then I'll know that it will come back around here come up around there up to that point back round and do a lovely turn in that and come back round down to the stem that moved and so then I've got the shape to the rest of it so what happens there is that that has a lovely turn in it so I'll get that in later and that turn will be shown by the vein that comes up around here and goes around that. It shows that happening and that sort of shows me what direction that's going. So the other part of it comes out to join into the other leaf about there and so how far down is that? Okay so I'll mark that on my page to start with. It's about there. And then I'll measure down and so you'll notice the measurements are not exact because um, they are leaves so I'll mark that and then I know that that is where it needs to come in from and it comes in about that far and that gives me the width of that leaf where it comes into about there and so I'll mark that point there so then I know that it comes up around has to join back to this point so I know where that point is and I'll put that over the end because I always paint out onto or draw out onto the masking so that it actually the um, masking tape so that it actually gives you a really good idea of, of how it's drawn okay otherwise it doesn't look right so I need to come up from here you notice I'm coming two ways at once I'm going up around there coming up and over and back around and then that'll go up to there I haven't got any um, serrated edge on it yet uh, I'll just get the shape of the leaf now the length of that from the stem to into the other leaf so it's that far so I'll mark that and that's where I think that will come around to mark that and so that's exactly what I said that I do that stem doesn't go straight, it comes down around and then over and around that way just a little bit. So I'll get that right and I haven't rubbed anything out yet. I'll rub out when I'm actually sure of what I've got there. I'll start to rub things out. 
Now, this has a little part of it that comes down further, goes up over that, comes back round, and that's the leading edge of the leaf. Comes around to, it's got to join up with that point. So it comes up and has a little bit of rise again, and then starts to come round. Now, this little bit here is back underneath, flies back under there. So that's the turnover. Okay, so in watercolour, a turnover is lighter than behind when I'm doing um, some close work. In a landscape, it's the opposite. It's light in the background, stronger in the foreground. But in actual um, normal work, then that's the, the idea that if it's going to be in front, then it has to be lighter. And that's the only thing that you've got to show on paper, the difference between light and dark. My leaf looks rather large, but that's all right. I don't mind if it's large. It's if it looks little because they're very, very big leaves. I'll just get the idea of where some of these go. Um, just through there so that I can see that's a turnover. That comes back in that way. Um, this has risen up and around. I can only show that in the paint and the color as I'm actually painting. So I'm going on to the next leaf now. Um, and that comes past here, probably about that far. I'll just move that over a bit, just to there. I'll get the end point of this leaf now. If I can grab it. The end point of that leaf will be to about there. Um, the end leaf to this one will be, oops, I just moved, will be to there roughly. So that's the other leaf. Okay, so I'm working on from that point there. I know that this has got to go back over to here. So I'm looking at the negative space between these two now and drawing. And so this is the next one. So that comes out and down to this one. Comes to about there and then turns and comes down to that point. Comes down pretty straight. So I'll just lightly come down, go over that edge just to get it right to the point or it doesn't necessarily have to go over that point too far. It is from where I'm sitting, um, but I may sort of just get it to that point when I actually paint it up. So now I've got the centre vein on this and I need to work out the width of the leaf around about halfway down the leaf is about that. Oops, That's about the width of the leaf. So it's from where my fingers were over here to about there. And you can see it's roughly, it's not, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So that's the other side to that comes into there and then I'll start to refine it. So, and when I draw this, I won't just start painting it. I'll actually look at it for some time before I start to work on what I'm going to do with it. And the painting of it. It comes in and goes out in these leaves so that's important. Make sure you watch how a leaf is actually um, formed. It goes out and back in. Okay so the other one is over the top of this other leaf and it's over the top about that far. About that far. Okay so I might need to adjust that intersection there later. That's all right. So that would come around to about there instead. So notice I draw that before I rub out the other bit. Okay, so that's going over, around. What's it do? It dips in a bit before it starts to go up again. It comes around. It has a bit of a dip, but the dip's noticed by that. And that's what the dip's doing. Um, comes around, goes out to that point there. So I'll come around a bit shorter, around around, down and into that. So that gets me that leaf. The next leaf is basically straight down from there. So I'll look at this negative space. It comes very close to this one. I haven't got a very nice turn on that. It's only a little turn. So it's only a little turn there. Comes down, dips in nicely, comes up and over and then starts to come around. Okay, so that's the fine drawing. And so then I'll go back to where I started here and that come into where the um, stem 
come into that intersection um, and to be honest I will have to actually turn this round I usually turn my work a lot but while I'm working under the camera I'm leaving it so that um, you can see exactly what's going on to get the idea of what's happening now I'm not sure what you can see of this from that distance you can see how I'm measuring that's the important thing um, but I'll turn it round and bring it down and show you what it looks like when I've actually done more to it. So this one has to come down to here. It has a bit of a, a sway in that um, vein, the, the actual stem coming into the veins, coming down through here. It doesn't do much. It does a little bit of a, an up and down. It's not dead straight down here comes down round and comes down round to that point and so now I've got the start of that how far down the stem is that not that easy to see to about there and then I'll start the actual leaf so that comes out now I'm getting very very shallow for this leaf that one must be much too wide so I'll then start to work on that to get the two in there. So this one comes out round here. So I'll get the distance of where that goes. Goes round and comes back in here. And then I'm missing this half, but it is turned over. It goes over to this side. It comes up a little bit, goes around, comes over to very close to that. And then it starts to go back underneath. But I still don't think I've got it wide enough um, and then comes around so what I'm going to do is make this one a little less wide and give myself a bit more room for the other one because I'm trying to sort of shove it in there and it doesn't work so this is the leading edge so the leading edge of a leaf is where it actually turns and it's that that starts to come up around and form that turn I'll have a look and see how wide this will come when I get that on that goes back in that way comes back around comes out round and back round round and down okay so there's something wrong with this leaf it's way too long from there to there so I'll just check that out Yeah, so maybe that stem could be a little bit longer before the leaf starts. So I'll bring that down further. Then that will get that little dip out into there. And that will come around. Comes over around to there, back over. And so what happens here? Just still needs to be wider. So I'll bring it out again comes out wider, comes out round up to the leading edge, back over, back underneath. And that's a lot bigger than what I've got. It's that one. And so now that can come out a lot further and make that look a lot fuller. Come back in around and back into there. Okay, so I'll have a look at that. Rub out the inside bit. That looks like a healthier leaf. And then this one can just come back shorter, come in a little bit less, comes over to that, then goes around, comes around to there. Okay, so now it's time to refine the actual drawing. So I'll just zoom in and see if you can see what I've actually drawn. Um, that'll go down in and I'll turn it sideways so that you can see what the drawing looks like sort of now it's time to refine my drawing and I have an issue with the branch where that actually goes off the page roughly about the third of the page that's fine but I'm now thinking of actually taking the branch out there and then reducing the bottom of this one to not top touch the actual tape. 
So if I took that off and made that finish there, that would break up the areas that I've now got, that I'm looking at here, that I now have to sort that out. So I've put my leaves aside. Uh, I've taken lots of photos. So you need to take photos for color uh, because even as I'm sitting here, the heat in the room is actually making the uh, leaves change while I'm actually looking at them. So the plan would be to maybe change this leaf that I've just put in there. And you notice I've got the leaf that was originally drawn in there, but I've put the other leaf over the top. And I always do that for the unity of um, going from one side of the actual leaf to the other side of this coming down so that you can actually see through it and then rub it out after. So I'll rub that out of the leaf and then have a look at the shape of that leaf. Uh, the leaf is not quite as round as it is there. It's, it's changing as well. And so that comes off the branch and goes around and disappears behind there straight at your face. So it's coming out towards me. Um, and then the leaf will start to come out from there. So that will be the start of the leaf. It has that jagged edge. You only see it up there. So I'll just note it at this stage. I don't want to do a lot on it. Um, but I also need to rub that out a little bit better. Um, and then this is the top edge of the leaf. So what does it do? It goes up, it goes across a little bit flat and then goes up around there and back over the top. So now I have to deal with the stem. So normally I'd turn the page around and have it coming towards me, but seeing as, well, I can do that, I guess. Um, I'd normally draw towards myself. So now I've turned it to that side and now I can see what's there. Just need to shift that over. So that's where we're at with the tape. And so now I can look at this. So that's coming up. This is coming out and going around that way. So that's coming out getting larger as it comes out and that joins onto it. Um, but do I want it to join on looking like that or what I will do is start to get another branch coming out that way and joining another branch onto it to make it more interesting than just having that going out at that length without anything going on. So now I'll have a look at the other branch that's very wide there. I need to take that back a little bit um, to have it come out a little bit softer and then I'll turn it back around again to have a look at this angle of that coming up. Now this is magnified quite a lot so it doesn't look as um, pencil marked as it does here. So I'll just take that out and then add that to it just a little bit better as it comes out from here. It drops straight down and then comes out and attaches to that. And it has a little bit of a turn as it attaches to the branch. So that'll attach that better goes in behind the leaf that's kicked up and then I'll start to refine the drawing um, and you don't normally see a drawing that close it doesn't look as drastic as that as it does on the screen now um, and so hopefully you can see what I've done there and I'm going up a little bit higher so that I can get this leaf in and so now I've got the leaf in that's um, the leaf here and start to I can bring it over near it and start to refine that. I can't get it to the other side. So I'll start to look at that and work out what happens here. There's a, a vein that comes out and then it jumps over and comes over that. So it doesn't go over at the same place. It stops and then changes because of this roll in the actual leaf. And so any of the others that I can see come down and they're coming a fairly long way. So veins on different plants are different so I always sort of show partly what they're like on different plants so that one comes out and goes around that way I did that fairly wide some of them have very fine ones coming off as well um, that'll be enough on that to start with so when you have a look at the pattern in the actual frill it's done like that it's actually quite round it goes back in and comes out. So I'll show it in part but I won't do it over the whole leaf. Otherwise the work becomes really um, static and, and it doesn't look good. It looks like all you see is jagged edges 
So I'll just do a few in a few places and leave the leaves as they are. So that leaf is looking fairly good. I'll move over to the next leaf and that's um, this one here. The shape of that leaf, how does it look as the shape? Well, I think the shape comes out round and it's very round about here and then cuts in around and then goes into that point. So the point can still touch the edge of the paper and the leaves have changed dramatically since I started drawing. So on this rise here, that rises up and comes round, that's where I'll start to get some of the edges um, that you can see. Now if I did too little, it doesn't look good either. So around this edge here you see quite a few of them. So I'll turn it sideways so that then I can start to get that pattern into those edges. They're quite big in places and quite round. That'll really be a good showing of, of what they look like. I won't do too many more, will I? Uh, they go sort of flat for a while and then they start again, but they're getting littler as they go down to there. Um, this leaf is over the top of that leaf, so I will always do that leaf behind darker. And when you're doing color behind something, then you can't just put it straight across there because it doesn't work that way. The leaf goes around here, so it goes in that side, in that side, and the water can bring the color across there, but you'll see that as we actually paint. So what happens with the veins on these? Um, the vein on here takes a little bit of a turn down and comes across um, the vein there. I don't do veins right to the end of um, leaves because they're not all the way to the end of a leaf. They do a little bit of a rise there and then disappear before it gets to the bottom. A little bit wide there too. So I'll take that width out there. Um, and drawing is something that I say to students that basically you just keep drawing until you get it right. And you will get it right. Or put it aside for a couple of hours and then go back to it. And then you'll be able to see what you've actually drawn and you get a fresh start at it and it seems to work wonders if you keep working at it. Okay so that's number two. Um, the third leaf, you can see some really light veins up here, it's fairly large coming to there and then it goes thin and then it goes up over a hump now and out. Now it's very wide at this end and so that needs to change. So actually as I do this, I'll actually come in and then to the point so that it's coming in with a nice shape. Um, where it comes around here, the actual um, pattern comes over and then starts going out again. I'll do a little bit there. Make sure you rub out the rest of the bits and pieces. So the next decision that has to be made is how is this going to be painted? Is it going to be painted with a white background or is it going to be painted um, with a dark background? But the colour of the leaves, I don't think they suit having a dark background. Um, they're quite dark in places, they could disappear as well. Uh, it could have a very light background on it, um, a very light wash. And just before we go today, um, and I'll be working on this drawing and making sure it's fine. So I just want you to look at this leaf for a minute and see the colours in that leaf. And so the overall first colour of that leaf, it could be light, light pink underneath the green there, but the major colour here is the pink. So that pink goes on and the pink goes out to the edge. But when the dark's brought in, it's left out to the edge and left the pink edge on it so that you can run water out to get colours to do that for you. Um, but this is so strong in the other colours. So the other colours come in later. There's a really, really dark pink and there's also a next shade of pink. And so I always look for the lightest value of something when I'm starting to paint it. So this part of the leaf down here could be done in chartreuse because I can then bring the other colours back into it. Um, and so I won't lift the other leaves up, but I'll talk about those. So this whole leaf would be coloured with 
colour here to start with, but it could have, as I'm actually putting the colour in, darken the colour for a darker pink down the end and out to the edges. This one oh, has a, a shade of the lightest green in through here. That's the whole leaf is done in that first. The pinks can be put on later. They're darker than the other colours. This one's got a hole in the leaf. So does this one up here. It has a hole as well. So I actually would draw that on the drawing so that it then, um, maybe I should turn it that way. Then you can see the whole three together. Um, I'm looking for the lightest value to put colour on. So this one could have the light pink in through here, changing to the chartreuse. And then the chartreuse will do the rest of the leaf, touch a pink there. But that's in a wet wash to start with because the greens and everything can be put in later and the dark green can be left here and you'll leave the light spots. So you're always looking for your light in watercolour. You can't just paint it into submission. You've got to actually think of the light and keeping the light the whole time. So I hope you've enjoyed that drawing um, exercise. We can actually put a photograph of this um, with the actual video so that you can see that as well.